Passion Travel is a channel specializing in all things travel street food and subscribe if you like the content. Mechhawi. Roasted lamb or goat, often prepared during special occasions and celebrations. Mechhawi is a traditional North African and Saharan method of roasting whole animals, typically lamb or goat, often for special occasions and celebrations. It's not a specific dish but a technique of cooking and serving meat, and it's a popular culinary tradition in Western Sahara, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and other North African regions. Preparation and Cooking The preparation of mechawi involves several steps. Selection and Seasoning A whole lamb or goat is selected for the mechawi. The animal is typically seasoned with a mixture of spices, herbs, and sometimes a marinade made from olive oil and various aromatics. Common seasonings include garlic, cumin, coriander, paprika, and thyme. Skewering. The seasoned animal is skewered onto a long, horizontal rod, often made from metal or wood, in a way that allows it to be slowly rotated and roasted over an open flame. Slow roasting. The skewered animal is placed over an open pit or a special mechawi grill. It is slowly roasted, and the meat is basted with the marinade to keep it moist and flavorful. Rotating. The skewer is regularly rotated to ensure even cooking and to develop a crispy and flavorful exterior. Carving and serving. Once the meat is cooked to perfection, it is carved and served. The skin and exterior are usually crispy and flavorful, while the interior meat is tender and succulent. Serving and enjoyment. Mechawi is often served as a centerpiece for special occasions and gatherings, such as weddings, festivals, and large family celebrations. It's typically accompanied by traditional side dishes and condiments, which can vary depending on the region but may include flatbreads, salads, olives, and sauces like harissa, spicy chili paste. The communal aspect of mechawi is significant, as it's often enjoyed in a social setting where friends and family gather around the roasted animal to carve and enjoy the meat together. The slow roasted, tender meat, along with the smoky and aromatic flavors, makes mechawi a cherished and memorable culinary experience. Mechawi is not just a culinary tradition but also a cultural one, reflecting the importance of hospitality and communal sharing of food in North African and Saharan cultures. It's a flavorful and festive way to celebrate special occasions and create lasting memories with loved ones. Svenj. Deep-fried donuts, often coated in sugar and enjoyed as a sweet snack. Svenj, also known as Svenj or Moroccan donuts, are a popular North African and Moroccan street food. These delicious fried donuts are soft on the inside with a slightly crispy exterior and are often enjoyed as a sweet treat or snack. Ingredients and Preparation The ingredients for making sponge are simple and typically include all-purpose flour, the main ingredient used to create the dough, yeast, to help the dough rise and become airy, water, to create the dough, often lukewarm water is used, salt, a small amount of salt is added for flavor, sugar, to sweeten the dough. Oil. For frying the donuts. Steps. Here's a general overview of the preparation process. Mixing. The flour, yeast, salt, and sugar are mixed together in a bowl. Kneading. Lukewarm water is gradually added to the dry ingredients to form a soft, slightly sticky dough. The dough is kneaded until it becomes smooth and elastic. Rising. The dough is left to rise in a warm, draft-free place until it doubles in size. This rise allows the yeast to ferment the dough, creating air bubbles that make the sponge light and airy. Shaping. After the rise, the dough is portioned into rounds or flattened discs. These shapes can vary, and you'll often see sponge in irregular shapes, which adds to their rustic charm. Frying. The doughnuts are deep fried in hot oil until they turn golden brown on both sides. The frying process results in a crispy exterior while keeping the interior soft and fluffy. Draining. Once fried, sponge are removed from the hot oil and drained on paper towels to remove excess oil. Serving and enjoyment. Sponge are typically enjoyed while still warm. They can be served plain or dusted with powdered sugar. Some variations are dipped in honey for extra sweetness or flavored with orange blossom water or rose water for a fragrant twist. These donuts are often sold by street vendors and are a popular choice for breakfast or as a snack with tea or coffee. They are beloved in Moroccan culture and are also enjoyed during special occasions and festivals. Sponge's simple yet delicious flavor and texture make them a delightful and comforting street food treat, and they are a cherished part of Moroccan cuisine. Bissara. A hearty soup made from dried fava beans, often served with bread. 
Bisara, also known as fava bean soup, is a traditional North African dish that is particularly popular in Morocco and Algeria. It's a hearty and nutritious soup made from dried and peeled fava beans, also known as broad beans. Bisara is often enjoyed as a comforting and filling meal, especially during the colder months. Ingredients and Preparation The key ingredients for making bisara include Dried fava beans. These beans are soaked and peeled before use. The peeling process can be time-consuming but results in a smoother and creamier texture for the soup. Aromatics. Onions, garlic, and sometimes leeks are used to create the flavor base for the soup. Spices. Common spices used in bisara include cumin, paprika, and ground coriander, which add depth and flavor to the dish. Olive oil. Olive oil is often used to saute the aromatics and provide richness to the soup. Water or broth. To achieve the desired soup consistency. Steps. The preparation of bisara typically involves the following steps. Peeling and soaking. The dried fava beans are soaked overnight to soften them. After soaking, the outer skins are removed, which can be a labor-intensive process but is essential for achieving a smooth texture. Sautéing. Chopped onions and garlic are sautéed in olive oil until they become soft and translucent. Spices. Ground spices like cumin, paprika, and coriander are added to the sautéed aromatics and toasted briefly to release their flavors. Cooking the beans. The peeled and soaked fava beans are added to the pot along with water or broth. The mixture is simmered until the beans are tender and cooked through. Blending. The cooked mixture is blended until it becomes smooth and creamy. Some variations of bisara may be left slightly chunky, depending on personal preferences. Seasoning. The soup is seasoned with salt and pepper to taste. Serving and enjoyment. Bisara is typically served hot and can be enjoyed in various ways. Standalone dish. It can be served as a filling main course, often accompanied by flatbreads or crusty bread. Garnishes. Bisara is often garnished with a drizzle of olive oil and a sprinkle of ground cumin, paprika, or fresh herbs like cilantro or parsley. Side dish. It can also be served as a side dish to complement other Moroccan or North African dishes. Bisara is a comforting and wholesome soup that reflects the rich culinary traditions of North Africa. It's valued for its earthy flavors, creamy texture, a uh, harira, a thick soup made from tomatoes, lentils, chickpeas, and spices, often enjoyed during Ramadan. Harira is a traditional North African soup that is particularly popular in Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. It's a hearty and flavorful soup that is often associated with Ramadan and is commonly enjoyed to break the fast during the holy month. Harira is also enjoyed throughout the year as a comforting and nutritious meal. Ingredients and Preparation The ingredients for making harira can vary slightly based on regional variations and personal preferences, but here are the core components. Lentils Red or brown lentils are commonly used and are a key ingredient that adds thickness and nutrition to the soup. Tomatoes Fresh tomatoes or tomato paste are used to create the tomato base of the soup. Onions. Onions are sautéed to create the flavor base for the soup. Aromatics. Garlic, ginger, and sometimes celery are used to add depth and flavor to the soup. Spices. A blend of spices, which often includes ingredients like cinnamon, paprika, cumin, and coriander, is used to season the soup. Herbs. Fresh herbs like cilantro and parsley are commonly used for garnish and to add freshness to the soup. Protein. Harira often includes meat, such as lamb or beef, as well as chickpeas or lentils for added protein. Lemon. Fresh lemon juice is added for brightness and acidity. Flour. Flour or vermicelli noodles are used to thicken the soup. Steps. The preparation of harira typically involves the following steps. Sautéing. Chopped onions are sautéed in a pot with olive oil until they become soft and translucent. Spices. Ground spices are added to the sautéed onions and toasted briefly to release their flavors. Tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes or tomato paste is added to create the tomato base for the soup. This mixture is simmered until the tomatoes break down and become saucy. Lentils and protein. Lentils, chickpeas, and meat, if used, are added to the pot along with water or broth. The soup is simmered until the lentils and meat are cooked through. Thickening. Flour or vermicelli noodles are added to thicken the soup, and the mixture is stirred until it reaches the desired consistency. Seasoning. The soup is seasoned with salt, pepper, and fresh lemon juice to taste. Herbs. 
Chopped fresh herbs are added as a garnish just before serving. Serving and enjoyment. Harira is typically served hot and can be enjoyed in various ways. Standalone dish. It can be served as a filling main course, often accompanied by dates and crusty bread. Mint tea. A popular beverage made from green tea leaves, fresh mint leaves, sugar, and hot water. Mint tea, also known as Moroccan mint tea or Maghrebi mint tea, is a beloved beverage in North African countries like Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya. It's known for its refreshing and aromatic qualities, and it's a fundamental part of North African culture and hospitality. Here's how it's typically made and enjoyed. Ingredients. Green tea. Loose leaf Chinese green tea is commonly used. Gunpowder tea is a popular variety for mint tea due to its strong flavor. Fresh mint leaves. Spearmint or a similar variety of fresh mint is the traditional choice, as it provides a cool, refreshing flavor. Boiling water. To steep the tea. Sugar. A significant amount of sugar is often used to sweeten the tea, although the level of sweetness can vary based on personal preference. Preparation. Rinsing the teapot. The teapot, often a traditional Moroccan teapot, is rinsed with hot water to warm it. Adding tea and mint. Loose green tea leaves and fresh mint leaves are placed in the teapot. The amount of tea and mint used can vary based on taste, but it's generally quite generous. Steeping. Boiling water is poured over the tea and mint in the teapot. It's left to steep for a few minutes, allowing the flavors to infuse. Sweetening. Sugar is added to the teapot while the tea is still hot. The amount of sugar added can be significant, and the level of sweetness is often adjusted to suit the drinker's taste. Some prefer their tea very sweet, while others prefer it less so. Pouring and frothing. Moroccan mint tea is typically poured from a height into small glasses. This not only cools the tea but also creates a frothy layer on top. The process of pouring is often done in a graceful and skilled manner. Serving. The tea is traditionally served in small glasses and is often accompanied by small sweets or pastries, such as Moroccan cookies or dates. It's also common to enjoy the tea with friends and family in a social setting. Cultural significance. Mint tea is deeply rooted in North African culture and hospitality. It's more than just a beverage, it's a symbol of hospitality, friendship, and social connection. It's customary for hosts to serve mint tea to guests as a gesture of welcome and respect.